You. Yes, you. You want to be like this, right? You want to have those top friggin' MVP games. Well, then you found the right place because today I'll give you 13 tips on how to get more kills in Siege. To start the video off with, positioning is really important. You're gonna have to set yourself up for a good way to take the gunfight. When you're holding an angle, think about how far you're exposing yourself. What will the enemy see from me? So often do I see people holding angles while standing in the middle of the doorway. You're a way easier target then because more of your body is exposed. If that is just your head or your elbow, that means the target to hit for the enemy is much smaller and they have to be more precise. You'll need to load angles where you get the advantage from. You can do this by standing on an object or being in places where the enemy doesn't expect you. And one aspect of positioning that will win you the round is making sure you're taken 1v1s. And I know what you're thinking. Ha! Women. Yeah, it sounds obvious, but it will be around winning in lots of situations, especially clutching situations. You don't want to walk into a room where more people are holding a crossfire on you. For example, let's say you want to enter wine cellar. You know one of the enemies is pillar and you know one will be in blue. If you walk in from the wine cellar door, they can both have an angle on you where you're walking in from. That is not a good situation and you will be pinned down in a crossfire. What you should do is walk in from the breach over here. You'll be able to isolate those gunfights and hide after you've taken one of the gunfights. Because first you take the good fight with the guy on pillar and then you get to cover or you rotate to the blue player. Here's a quite recent situation from last year's Challenger League where a player had to clutch where he isolated his gunfights really well and here's why. So Nitro is here in a 1v4. First he responds to the tracers coming from Dom's window. Then he repositions to peek the top of the white stairs expecting someone to try and trade him out. He safely rotates rotates to pre-fire the big window and escapes into dorms, knowing that the dorms window was just cleared out and that's a safe area for him. He peeks the person on top wide and then does a ring around the rosy with the person coming into dorms. But because Nitro repositions every single time towards an area where he knows he's safe, he's able to consistently put himself in separate 1v1 situations instead of taking one big 1v4. And now back to the MVP screen that we had in the intro because right before that I got a one versus two clutch where I isolated my gunfights into two times a 1v1. I took the gunfight on Attic and then I hit behind the bomb sessi to reload only to then take the gunfight with the player on my right. This also comes along with knowing when to reposition. Once an enemy droned you or you killed someone and they even have the slightest bit of communication, enemies will know you're there. You should get out of that position because otherwise you're an easy target. All right. I know that was a pretty tough subject to start out with, but I'll have some more simple ones to follow up that'll be in line with each other. To start off with game sense. Having good game sense is not something you just acquire from one day to another. But luckily, there's some quite easy things you can do to gain game sense. Some things you should do is watch skilled players when they play the game. For example, in Twitch streams. You can learn so much from this. You'll see why players make certain decisions, how they move through the map, what angles they hold, and how they set up bomb sites or attacks sites. The other thing you can do is play the game a lot. From playing lots, you get an idea of where people tend to push from, what operators you'll see, and where people are. For example, I have my drone in Visa here on Consulate, and I saw smoke going into Visa. With my game sense, I knew, all right, he's probably gonna hide into the corner at the Visa door, so it was an easy target for me to pre-fire. And with game sense of, for example, knowing where people are, you can start to pre-fire more. And no, I don't mean hold mouse one with your LMG until you walk around the corner, but I mean specifically pre-firing into the direction of where the enemy could be. These are a few examples of where I got kills due to pre-firing. Here on coastline I pre-fired onto the service entrance door because I know people spawn pick this one often. That's a part of having game sense. For this cafe clip I pre-fired into the direction of where the bullet tracers were coming from. I only needed a little bit of adjustment to get my aim right on the position of the enemy's head. Here on this coastline clip I pre-fired into the direction of the red pings and I expected people to be on the hookah balcony, leading up to me picking up a cheeky 3k. The reason why this will get you so many kills is that you'll have a peeker's advantage, meaning you'll see the enemy before they see you on their screen. And if the ping that you and the enemy are in playing on isn't that different, the chances of them being able to respond to your pre-fire will be very small. Unless they put something like G Fuel on the bread for breakfast, but I assume that's unlikely. Another movement related tip is learn how to quick peek or learn how to shiko peek. This is a way of peeking that 
that's used to gain information on where the enemies are. And trust me, it looks difficult, but it's a muscle memory kind of thing. The more you keep practicing this, the easier it'll get. When I started practicing this, I could do it to the right side, but I struggled massively trying to do it to the left side. And now I can do it both ways easily. Just start by slowly moving your fingers around the button like shown on the screen. You can see here how I press these buttons to Shaiko Peak. Keep trying to get faster with it and eventually it'll be muscle memory. And this has gotten me so many kills with enemies not even being able to see me on their screen. And now even when you're both on low ping, and I usually play on 9 ping due to me almost living in the server, you'll kill someone or peek to someone without them even being able to see you. If you are dying to someone that you don't even see on your screen, that is very frustrating. And one tip you may have seen if you've watched my 15 easy seeds tips video is crosshair placement. That's why I'll keep this one short. As much as some people are into feed picks, you will not get them from your enemies in Siege. So stop aiming for their feet and start aiming for the head. Siege is a one headshot kill game. This way you won't have to adjust your aim midst gunfight if you have your aim already on their head level. If you peek an enemy and you both shoot at the same time, you'll have an advantage if you're already aiming at their head. And now that we talked about one of my videos, you've actually gotten quite far in the video, so you must be liking the content. I'm trying to reach 10,000 YouTube subs, so please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps out a lot. There's lots of siege tips and some funny moments that happen during my live streams over on Twitch. It's not the it's not the sexist guy. Let's go. Hola, mi amigos, cómo estás? Hola, muy bien. Muy bien, bro. ¿Qué tal? Ay, muy bien, bro. Thank you so much for supporting the YouTube channel, I appreciate it a lot. And now a tip that'll require a little bit more five head action. Sometimes taking all the gunfights you can isn't the best idea. For example, if you peeked an enemy and you think they now know where you are, one of the worst things you can do is re-peek that in the same stance. This will make you an easy target for the enemy. You could choose to re-peek in a different stance, maybe crouched instead of standing, or you could even abandon the gunfight. I would do that in scenarios where the operator that you're facing isn't one of the most important ones to kill. If you're about to be in a gunfight with a thermite or an IQ, which one would you prefer to kill? It's obviously the thermite, as they have a bigger influence in the round as they might be the only heart preacher that the enemies have. Another thing is if you're on low HP, you'll probably have a lower chance of winning the gunfight. And I know if you're feeling confident or if you want more kills, it goes against your way of thinking. But sometimes staying alive for your team will mean more than winning out one gunfight that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. The following set of tips are for those that really want to improve. If you're serious about getting better, something you can do during a gaming session is make a list of how or why you died. Sometimes you start to see a pattern in the ways that you died. Maybe you're getting too aggressive in the early round or your positioning was poor. You could learn from this and make sure it won't happen again next time. You could also watch some of your games back in the match replay. You can see what went wrong or what you could have done better to get an advantage on the enemy. Maybe you could have pushed a different doorway, or you could have held a different angle, or maybe you still had some utility, or well, maybe you even had a drone, and you could have used that to get some information on where your enemies were. Another layer of improvement could be in what attachment to use. Keep in mind that the flesh hider counters vertical recoil. A compensator counters horizontal recoil. A muscle break works good on the MRs because it affects first shot recoil, and a suppressor is a tricky one. I would only use it on IQ's pistol to side take out gadgets or on an operator like Nook. And when you have that set right, you can try and practice a lot in training grounds, shooting range, or aim trainers. There's lots of players you can do to practice specifically for siege skills. Two other quick tips I can give you is if you're playing with friends, ask them to drone you in, or even drone your friends in to help them get more kills. You can walk directly behind a drone and acquire information. The closer you walk to the drone, the more risky it might be if information doesn't come through quickly, but the further you walk away from the drone, it could mean that information changes by the time you get to the location of the drone. You can have a lot of information with this though. A spotted but unknowing defender is basically a dead defender. And last but not least, don't always sprint. So often do I hear people run around all over the building and you are actually at your loudest when you're sprinting. So it'll give a clear sound cue for enemies as to where you are. And crouch walking recently got nerfed, so you'll be louder as well when you crouch walk. If you feel like an enemy is close to you, and they don't know you're there, you might be able to slow walk to them so you catch them off guard.
You made it to the end of the video. And that means you can now be the top fragging MVP player in your games with all of this information. Leave a like on the video and comment if you have any other good tips. I might use these for future videos. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel. We're getting closer to 10,000 YouTube subs and I appreciate all your support. There's lots of videos on the channel, such as this ace guide or my callouts guide. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.